This I don't know. Out I'll let me go year by year, <laughs> yeah, and then we'll yeah, see. Because yeah. I can't. I don't know. I think. Yeah, I know. But I know. All right. So yeah, year Sweetie, one. I remember. All right. Cool. Yeah. Year correct. one, it was Sweetie, Gunna, Thug. Um, Gibson had called me. It was like, let's try this out. He really like had the idea to start this. He paid for it out his pocket. Not gonna lie. What? At at, at first. first, he paid for it out his pocket. Right. Um, and because he like thought that this was gonna be crazy. Um, and we did it. Right. Um, and then, you know, we figured out everything with Call of Duty and then they ended up using them. They were like, oh, we love these. Like, this is crazy. Yeah, you know, they were on set surprised. They were like, what? Yeah. What is going on? Like, what is this? Yeah. Um, and it, funny enough that like my friends, one of my friends works at uh, the agency. So he helped out and made sure that like, you know, that was used and stuff. Right. So then. um. Year two comes now and like they call me back and they were like, yo, we, we, you know, we love the first year. We want to step it up and make it nice again. Yeah. So now this, this year, actually, um, we, we shot Modern Warfare 2, um, same portrait series for Modern Warfare 2, like Pete Davidson. Yeah. Um, who else was in that uh, shit? Uh, Steve Aoki was in there. Steve Aoki and like, uh. I'm blanking. Yeah, there was like a few stars. In yes, that yes. There was there was a lot of people. So that was that was cool too. Right. And it was like an honor that I could, you know, I grew up playing Call of Duty. Yeah. Like yeah. From high school. We played mad during COVID. Yes, we did. We had the squad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm still on now. So, you know, it was like an honor that they brought me back. And then we did another campaign after that. You know, I directed some social uh, clips. Yeah. For with them. the, the uh, who, okay, yes. Which had like the song and shit. Yeah. So how who who created that song? Was that already a song? Uh, like the doom doom. Yeah. And doom, they're like in the doom. they're yeah. like in like a locker room or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Kinda. So I'm you know their team had did that. Made it. Yeah, yeah. So you know, friend Valentin Petit was directing the commercial, and my other friend that works at the agency had brought me in to do some of the social films. Yeah. So what's the difference between you know preparing for? Like the photography side, I know we just like gl glided over like three massive projects, right? Mm. But like for you, what's the difference? Like which one felt like more challenging to you uh, from all of them across the board? I mean, obviously the first one, you guys are putting it together on like probably a, a smaller budget and you're winging it and you probably are trying to, it's proof of concept. Mm. Now the concept's been accepted. They love it. So they bring you back for round two. And then the third one, you're adding like social elements and like video elements on top of it. So like between the three like which one had the most challenges or which was like your favorite yo i just wanted to say the black window cream community is now free um i'll make a separate episode explaining why it's free but if you are not in black window cream if you haven't been a part of the community or if you have been in the past and you haven't checked in in a bit go make an account sign up it's absolutely free i'm i'm, I'm done charging money for it i want this to be a free resource for creators of all kinds so come share job opportunities, share your ideas, share your work, ask for feedback, uh, make friendships, grow your network. Black Window Cream is totally free for creators. So bwnc.com slash join. All right, let's get into this podcast episode. Uh, I would say the most challenge, not challenging, but the one that was, uh, you know, more of something to figure out was the first one just because we hadn't did it before and right. like just setting what the tone should be. Mm. Um, my favorite one was like the Modern Warfare 2 like photo series that I did. Yeah. I think like the like the one with Pete Davidson with the grenade. And, yeah, yeah. And, um, that one was really cool. I thought that like the set and the lighting was insane and I like that one. How do you handle like directing talent like that? Like obviously you've been around all of them mm. and usually they're pros, right? Like they know how to come in they can handle it. But like, what are you giving them for direction on like what you're looking for? How are you explaining what the shot will look like? Sometimes it's not always like visible. Like you can't really tell what it will end up looking like shit like that. Mm. Like how are you, how do you communicate that to them? Um, well, they kind of just come right in. They ask, you know, they bring them in and, and, um, I have like a few seconds that I talk to him. I say, Hey, look, I already have it on screen. I'm like, hey, this is like what the reference is. Oh yeah. yeah. You know, we test shoot. And yeah, yeah. This is what it looks like. Um, so yeah, let's get it. Right. And you know, so, just yeah. <laughs> like literally like my energy is I mean, I don't know, something about like people that I shoot 
they always are just like cool with me. They just like, trust it. I'm not a very like, uh, I'm a like I don't know. I feel like I'm warm mm. when I like meet somebody. So they're not thrown off by like something. Yeah. At all, like I'm always with the best intentions when I right. meet somebody. So I just say, hey, how's it going? Like, hope your day's been good. Um, this is what we're shooting. You know, I'm gonna let you take a second if you need a second or we could just go ahead and start it up right will you do you get much time with them for those sh like on those days depends like uh could be two minutes could be 10 minutes could right. be 30 minutes some people are like if depending on like um if they have to go it's like a minute like their obligations for the rest of the set because it's like they're no, there just obligate like if they have to catch a flight oh like dip literally. trey young yeah was two minutes two he had minutes? to catch a flight he had to catch a jet jesus swear it was two minutes so uh, how many fucking <laughs> photos yeah. did you fire off in two mm, minutes 10 15 Ten. yeah i was gonna say but i covered all the angles that yeah, i needed right, to right, right does it uh do you feel ever you know when you're get, like when you kind of come in you come in at this interesting angle where like everyone sh should at the just trust that you know what you're doing right but sometimes clients are like they look over your shoulder. They're always like, they just give you that fucking paranoia. Sometimes do you ever experience that with, with any of your clients, like any clients where no one in particular, but a pressure from them to like deliver to a certain extent or, um, I mean, there's always going to be a pressure. Um, uh, you know, it's just like making sure and in, in like the pre-production that you kind of just like really explain your vision, mm -hmm. you know, first, first and foremost. And, and you know on set there's always like 50 people yeah. or maybe there's less right you know it's all different but i don't know i just always know <clears throat> excuse me i just always know how to like communicate what my vision is and most times like i, I, I mean ever every time like i've been on on shoots like it's been pretty smooth like there's always going to be pe people over your shoulder like oh but you know you just gotta know how to handle it yeah. in the moment, right? Nah, I hear that. The, the you know you continue to elevate and like when you're dealing with this, do you? Have, yeah, I know you have a manager. You have an agent at this point or not? Nah? You just kind of get reached out to directly. Mm, yeah, my manager is my agent and my best friend. So. There we go. That's dope. And my brother. There we go. So Family. We've stuck together forever. Um, how'd you meet? How'd you meet your manager? Uh, Dave was Puff's assistant. Oh really? Yeah, that's dope. So when I first started, he housed me. Yeah, and yeah, it's my brother. That's crazy. Yeah, and he's always been my managers. So right. So then you let out. you like do you guys kind of do good cop bad cop shit where you let him handle like all the the finance and all that shit? So yeah, I, I, he handles creative. everything. We have like a joint email, so right. You know, you see what's happening. He's like my he's you know yeah it's he's, tight. he's Dave yeah, yeah, yeah wavy Davy wavy Davy <laughs> yeah. He, he handles everything, the, everything. So when, w how much of it are you getting just like, do you feel like most of your work is coming from just client outreach? Uh, yeah. Like TikTok, the TikTok shit. Mm -hmm. Explain that one. Uh, the TikTok shit. I mean, yeah, for that, uh, I had got reached. I had gotten reached out from Spring Studios, the, pr the production company. And, you know, they had told me that they were producing something for TikTok. Huge campaign. Um, it was like a four day shoot in New York. What was um, the campaign for? Like, what was the premise of it? It was their, um, culture driver series. So they were highlighting 20, I believe 27 different, um, different CMOs and 27 different TikTokers that, um, did brand partnerships with TikTok. Right. So imagine golf, like for example, goldfish right. was a brand partner with TikTok. Right. And um you know from goldfish there was a cmo and the tiktoker who made like the video go viral mm. so they partnered them up and they wanted to highlight uh each in individual partner that they had partnered group so That's it dope. was like go it was like so many different like companies Coca -Cola, like brands like yeah, that yeah exactly yeah. so we had made a book out of it like a photo book i wish i brought it oh nice um and i mean yeah it was crazy i like photographed 27 different people in one shot and then we had like was that for real everyone was there or was that like green screen shit 
uh yeah was, yeah i mean they're real people no i know but like sometimes they do those like the star studded like movie things and they're, they're mm-hmm. like actually photoshopping people in but they all have to shoot the exact same way and shit oh you, you never nah, seen yeah no, i'm back <laughs> i'm playing them yeah it was it was it was a comp shot yeah it was <laughs> oh yeah okay right because i was like bro getting that many people in one room i was like <laughs> yeah but the shit looks so tight was yeah, that yeah. Ch- how was that for you doing a comp shot for anyone who doesn't understand what this is yeah <laughs> dude I, unless you don't want me to tell people what this is if this is supposed to be heck. yeah okay you don't care Mm. um it's where like you 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 know in this case there's that many people all those cmos can't all be in the same fucking place at the same time yeah so he has to literally organize a way to shoot it so the whole it's a whole group photo because mm. literally it's a full group photo yeah. but how did you go about doing that logistically like that's got to be a fucking that was nightmare that was an that was crazy you gotta measure shit do yeah. science shit yeah 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 um you know I just I just showed up and fucking shot that. Bitch. Nah, it was crazy. <laughs> so like, there's this like um, diagram mm-hmm. that's like there was there was a process. I I um, did you consult with people for it? Like uh, yeah, I mean just me and Pierre kind of just like mapped out that whole yeah. campaign. Um, but like you know the agency Spring people from Spring um, had helped out, but I went the extra mile and had. Uh, just do Jake sketch out every detailed pose in the photo. I'm gonna send it to you so you could put up the sketch. All right, but in the in the in the thing. What do you mean, like literal sketch of the person <clears throat> holding their arm like this? Yeah, so, so like we basically this. just sketched out 27 people. Yeah. On one photo. Yeah. But I had them sketch out each pose for each person. So we had each person's name, what they look like. Like we had that brief of like. These are the two people, two people, two people. So I had like, okay, let's say Betty or somebody like, she looks like she would pose like this in this spot behind this person next to this person. God damn. So it was insane. But knowingly, I'm not going to shoot them all at the same time. Everything had to be right. Yeah. Everything had so to be right. Someone like, needed to have their arm on someone's mm, shoulder. Like you needed to know who that person was. Yeah. Well, we and- shot them in groups. So oh, okay. So you'd have like a it was like people. a group. Sometimes it was one person we shot. Sometimes it was three. Sometimes right. it was but six. But even that, that's what I'm saying. Like that's difficult as fuck to coordinate. Yeah, it was. It that's was crazy. Hard. Yeah. So then everything had to be like just right. And was it difficult in post dealing with it? Like, did you feel like you got really like close enough that you could yeah. obviously make it work? But mm-hmm. well, I mean, we were like layering the photos right out. Like on oh, the as spot. it was happening. Yeah, that's crazy. So how many days? How how long was that? That shoot? was a three day shoot. Three day shoot, mm-hmm. all in one location. Mm-hmm. Crazy. Mm-hmm. So when they came, when they approached you for that type of job, like that main photo is a big asset that they need, but then you also needed a bunch of other assets. Yeah, around. we did like a hundred other photos for the book. Was Valentina V? Do you know who that is? Valentina V? Do you know that name? She mm-hmm. does. She's like a beast with a uh, premiere and all this shit. But I feel like she was a part of that campaign. Did some video elements. Did you do just photo elements? Mm-hmm. I feel like she was a part of that shit because I remember she's like, I did three hundred some videos around TikTok, Probably. whatever. It was like crazy. Probably. Because there was a lot, a lot of moving parts. Yeah, well, where were you, where did you shoot it at? In New York. Oh, it was in New Springs. York. Springs. Uh, we didn't shoot at Spring. We shot it. I don't know where we like shot it. Like a big it. soundstage. It big. I mean, yeah. Like we had like three different studios. So I was also directing like the like social videos as well. So. Oh, you were. All mm-hmm. right. So maybe it was something different. Maybe yeah. So then, how did you, how do you plan for all that shit? Like, what? Uh, are you it was doing? a lot of work. It was two months of work. Was it? Oh yeah. Walk us through it. Cause I feel like that shit, bro. That's the hat. That's like yeah. what people don't understand. Cause um, you were funny. Cause you'd be fucking so chill and shit. Where you're just yeah. like, yeah, man. Like it was a lot of work, but we got it done, and now we had a fucking dope ass campaign for TikTok. Well, you know, they came to me, and this is what we want to do. Yeah, we want to highlight our our companies that we're partnered with, and you know, there's going to be two people from each company that we want to highlight. So we want to shoot them in pairs. We want to shoot them individually and then we want to have them in this group photo so i'm like okay cool um but we want different backdrop colors we want different props we want um different movement we yeah. want different lighting but it has to all feel cohesive so i'm like okay cool so we just begin to dive into inspo fashion you know, my thing is like I'm super inspired by like fashion photography, so I wanted it to feel fashion. Right. And they they did it as well. They wanted to really feel like Vogue fashion and stuff like that. Which but, is funny because that's like the opposite of TikTok. 
in a exactly. way. You know exactly. I mean? But we're shooting like just normal people, not models. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just including like normal me and you everyday people into like uh just high fashion lighting yeah, yeah. posing right right it was interesting yeah, and nice. it was like cool it was like but like how it worked was we had like one big uh studio space right let's yeah. say studio a okay studio a would be okay there's going to be a a video set right here then in the in the next room it was basically like a huge divider wall we're going to do portraits portrait b studio b is portraits then in another studio down the hall, we're gonna, Studio C was uh, the group shop. Mm. So we'd get uh, the first group in, two people, shoot them on video set, 10 minutes, boom. We have to move to Studio B, right. portraits. Group, uh, group shot and then one and one portraits. So like group shot, two people yeah, and whoa, whoa, whoa. whatever then we would move them into then they would chill out for a second and then next group would come in right after boom same thing then now there's four people depending on the scheduling i would shoot those four people in the group shop then um you know it just kind of went like that then sometimes two people would come in and i would have to shoot them to just by themselves on the group shot and you know we would have them sketched out and like we'd have like tape markers on the floor or like on the piece of paper, like they were on the left side or the right side right, or in the right. middle. And we had like, we already knew what we were going to do with them because we had planned it out. Like these two people from X company are going to be right here. And you're just showing them the sketch or do you have like a, no, a just, TV or something? Hey, like? come on in. You're going to stand right here. This is where you're going to do this. How you're going to kind of pose. Right, right. Feel like this, feel like that. That's it. So you were shooting the photos for both of those and then you had someone else doing the video? Like, no, I was doing all of it. You shot the video? It was insane. Yeah, it was, it was insane. It was insane what were you <laughs> using different camera setups for that or you yeah just, yeah so you had like a, we had an re setup. on yeah, yeah on the video set then we had you know the, the other camera here and then we had the other camera and the other that's crazy yeah good lord just different lighting setups like all built out for three days do you ever like ref i mean you gotta think man this shit's ridiculous right like all these things you're funny as hell because you're so casual with mm -hmm. how you talk about these things but they're like they're like big feats, you know what I mean? Big challenges and like big projects that you've been able to work on throughout the course of like a three year time span or four years. And especially during COVID and shit, like, which I feel like it, it set everyone back, but I feel like you still were able to thrive and get projects out during that time too. Mm -hmm. Um, how's that? I mean, like, I remember when we first talked, like you're talking about your family and shit and knowing where you can't like came from and like how you've been able to like, build this career for yourself like how has it been talking to your family and like a lot you know when you go home and all these new things are coming out because it just keeps getting bigger especially like mm -hmm. from a director standpoint too like i know you're kind of like saying photography is your main love mm -hmm. but you're still having the opportunity to do these different things like how's it been for for people at home mm, i mean i probably go home like once a year back to massachusetts really yeah yeah like i think i've only been back maybe one time this whole year but um you know i talk to my family every day yeah it's just normal right i'll tell them like i'm about to shoot this and like oh okay <laughs> like i don't know it's just it's like, yeah, it's they all know life. that like i don't know it's just i but I, I don't know i mean there are friends of mine that like are like dude you just did this like what like you just shot this person and i'm like yeah that's what I'm saying. I think that's most of the listeners in this fucking mm -hmm. podcast. And it, it's funny as hell because you're just like so used to these types of things happening. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm just just focused on my work, bro. Right. Like, you know, I'm just so just I live and breathe what I do. Mm -hmm. Like I, I literally two days ago, I was up till 630 in the morning editing. Yeah. A photo like like a few photos. But like it's just because I want to. Mm hmm there's nobody like there's literally nobody pushing me anymore to be like get this to me or make this crazy i just have to depend on myself to do that yeah in a sense if that makes sense no it, it definitely makes sense like i have my own deadlines i although you know people that i work with have deadlines for me but i'm just saying like in the most case i'm my own boss yeah so i have to not be comfortable with what i have and just keep making new stuff 
and like just keep staying inspired keep reaching out or just keep my foot on on the gas yeah that's what i was gonna ask too because i feel like it's it's easy to get complacent when people are hitting you up all the time how much of that is you doing outreach like how much how many times um do you look at the rolodex and be like oh you know what would be sick i would love to work with that person like do you ever do that are you ever hitting people up or has it been just like so constant that you haven't even needed to think like that um like did drake did how was drake's thing like for the album yeah so that that's rare like where i'll do an outreach kind of like it's it's pretty rare like i have like people that work at agencies and people that and i'll just do an outreach really just checking in like just saying how like if i was to hit you and be like yo how you been bro yeah, like yeah, yeah. that's really it and then right. maybe i'm on their minds right but uh in terms of outreach to where i'm like yo let's work is rare like what you were about to say like with the drake thing i messaged drake uh one day i was like in boston and i just randomly just dm'd him and was like yo would love to shoot with you let me know if there's any opportunities and he immediately just replied back and he was like yo can you come to toronto like tomorrow what the fuck and i said yeah i didn't even resp- i said yeah and then the next message um i sent him was oh, i'm in toronto <laughs> and he was like cool let's let's shoot tomorrow if you feel like you're ready and then we just went for it okay wait <clears throat> so why were you in boston <laughs> I was just back home. Back with home. Okay. So the one rare time you're back home with your family yeah. once a year. It was in like February. You pinged Drake and Drake said, come to Toronto. And you just hopped over there real quick. Mm-hmm. So what, did you just catch a, you just bought a flight real yeah, quick? You didn't even know like what the intention no, I, was. I was home for like the longest time I've ever been home. It was like two weeks. Yeah. And I just literally told my mom, like, I'm leaving tomorrow. So and then what was the, was what'd you guys dead. do? Like, how did you come up with that shot? Like, you know what I mean? Like he was just like, yo, I, I don't know what uh, we're shooting for, but let's just shoot. Yeah. You didn't well, know it was no, be we we kind of yeah yeah we kind of like mapped mapped it out in a sense, but we just shot for it. Like where? Just like running at a around. studio, actually at my my friend Jamal and Charlie's studio. Like a photo studio or something? Mm-hmm. Oh really? Mm-hmm. So you just hit them like yo I'm gonna yeah be here. yeah, and they just blessed me with the studio. Well, I, I reached out to him and I was like yo I'm gonna be in Toronto like this is, you know, kind of what I'm doing, and they were like yeah let's get it like. They were just so. You think I'm nonchalant? They were. Those boys are the most nonchalant people I've ever met. Why? I told them I was shooting Drake, and they were just like, "What? Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, let's 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 set it up." Yeah. So, you know, that's just like, I don't know, just they're like kind of like me, like just like really just focused on the craft. Right, right, right. You know, like they have their own things going. Um. So, but you get, you know, you get in there and you start shooting with them. Mm-hmm. You kind of have an idea that maybe this could be album artwork. Had you heard the album? Did you have like a, what vibe were you trying no, to catch? Like, what were you trying to like, what was your inspo for the shoots? Or was it just like catching him in the moment and see what happens with it? Uh, Yeah, we had talked a few times and just like try to, just, really the goal was just to uh, do something creative and just to shoot. He was really just giving me a shot and like, Bless me with the opportunity. That's crazy. Yeah. Then it became the album artwork. Mm-hmm. It's fucking sick. Mm-hmm. How'd that feel? Felt great, man. He's have like my shot, favorite artist. Well, yeah. Have you shot album covers for like anyone else? Uh, Roddy Rich recently. Roddy. Roddy. That photo's insane. Thank you. The literally you sent you texted to me, which that came out already. Yeah. Okay. Least, cool. Yeah. Um, which album is that? Uh, Feed the Streets Three. So it's like this ill above looking down shot of them at like a dinner room table vibe uh with the the homies around the table and he's just looking up and it's just like a hard photo um you doing that you doing drake's cover art uh like you're develop you have this interesting access and in like the development of like relationships with these artists like do you feel like with drake because you shot with drake again right like since then wasn't there another shot i saw that you did with like a from the same shoot oh that's from the same yeah. shoot right do you feel like when you develop these relationships with the artists you're able to have more of like access to like what their goals are moving forward. Like when you obviously like maybe they'll call you and be like, Hey, I want to do album artwork cover shoot. Cool. So that's like the concept. But sometimes I feel like you kind of can hear you you're in the rooms and you hear those behind the scenes conversations where like, you know, before most people like eight months, two Mm -hmm. years in advance, 
an album's coming or this is coming, which mm. gives you like inside access to be able to like prep an idea or pitch someone. Obviously the Drake shit sounds mad random. Like you just randomly got yeah, it. like yeah. you hit it at the right time. You know what I mean? It could have been anyone. Mm -hmm. like he's got hella photographers he works with. Like just the mm -hmm. chance that you had said that, he's like, Oh yeah. It was dude, a perfect timing. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. That's literally crazy. It was perfect timing. It's fucking bizarre shit. Mm -hmm. Like, do you feel like you you get you you use those tips that you hear? Like when you're getting tipped off through hearing conversations by just being at the table or being in the room, do you use that to your advantage in ways? Well, in terms of like like knowing that an album's coming for the artwork and stuff. Yeah. Well, or not just that, but like you know events or maybe there's like you know like if you you knew that someone else was having a party or if like whatever I don't know what it is just like. Well, recent like all right, so like I guess recently, um, usually I get reached out to so. Like for Roddy Rich, for example, like yeah. that was like the third time I've shot with him. Right. So like I already know it's gonna be for an album yeah, cover, yeah. and um, you know, you develop these relationships to where like people want to work with you again, and because they like enjoy the experience, they love how they look, they love the image, they mm -hmm. love what you created, uh, the vision and 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 stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I don't know. What were the like for that? Was that the only look you did? Like, was that the whole goal was to get that one image that... Yeah, that was the whole goal. But then we, we created like a whole bunch of more photos. You did? Yeah, yeah. In that one day? Like yeah, you were shooting yeah. a bunch of looks? We shot like different outfits, different looks. We had got this like huge apartment in uh, New York. Um, Yeah, we we have a whole bunch. I'll send you. Yeah. So did, did those, are those getting utilized? Yeah. Oh, they are? So like, you know, DSPs. Oh, cool. Um, Bunch of different like probably i don't know social yeah right but mostly like i see like images on his tour that he's using them for probably you know billboards in new york and right. stuff like that did you have that concept in mind where you're doing the the shooting down mm -hmm. look you he had actually that, had that idea he did that was his vision. oh dope and why? i just executed did it you say like why that meant like why he wanted to do it that way um i know he had just said like he wanted to really he had this idea a year ago we were gonna shoot it like a year ago then something happened we couldn't do it so then uh we we postponed it right um and he kept the same vision damn and this was his vision is to be at the table with his his team like really in gratitude thankfulness praying um and we just made it happen it was it was light it was not light but it was like yeah i had a great team yeah yeah, yeah. i had a great team. well it's cool because it just kind of looks like it's it's a common moment, you know, him sitting down breaking bread with his people. Mm -hmm. yeah, but him literally. like looking outside of the moment, you know, catching eyes of who's looking in. Like, I don't know. It's, it, those types of images are really cool to me. There's a lot of times where you're just going to catch a photo where someone's just like straight posing to the camera. But those types of images, I think, mm -hmm. what that stand out for people. You know what I mean? And the catalog that you'll build mm -hmm. with those types of images are like, they're just fucking unique, you know? Like yeah. the Lil Nas X shit that you did too. What was that shit for? Like that, like you had some, so many, like the low shot that you did with, he had like the shoes on mm -hmm. um, and like the variations in that. Like mm -hmm. you get this unique opportunity to shoot like fucking big Yeah, I just look planet, at it, bro. I, I look at it as like, I'm going to be put in a room with somebody that's great and let me just, just kill it. Like, let me just be great. Like, what do you feel like I'm you're not, not doing I'm right like now? I'm like relentless. What do you feel like you're not doing that you wish you were doing right now? Hmm. Uh, I would just maybe say I'm kind of just doing it. I I feel like I'm doing it, but I definitely want to be in like the like the fashion space, like yeah, editorial, high fashion. Like, yeah, that's like my space. What do you? I mean, like that's really what I'm inspired by. Like. Because you pull your mood references and stuff seems to be They're like, all that's high fashion. Yeah, right. there's like really high fashion, like ad campaigns, Off-White, Louis Vuitton, Gucci. Like, right, right. You know, like those images like that you see that are like high fashion. Yeah. That's the space. The If you go back to like where we left off. That I'm like inspired by. Right. And that's like the up. one space that eventually I'll be in. I feel like you're like already got a foot into it. You know what I mean? Like to be able to have access to it, you know, but that might be where the outreach starts to come from because, you know, that's why I always think about a lot of people kind of, um, there's so much shit, like, especially like I've always been to the point where it's always been contacting me. Mm -hmm. But then when I really step back and I think like, man, you know, it'd be dope to hit that person. Like, I bet we could make some ill shit. Like you did that with Drake, right? Like you being able to tap on those doors for those brands that you fuck with, that you feel like would, 
be the next level for you in the next chapter like if you look at your next like five year goal mm-hmm. and you start knocking on those doors like I, people are gonna open that motherfucker wide open for you bro yeah i well like how i see it is like you know i'm just gonna continue to like just work on my craft mm-hmm. and not really for that type of space like i think it would just come naturally yeah like i shouldn't have to reach out to like brands like Gucci, Louis Vuitton, or, or like high end brands, like or magazines, they should just come to me and say, "Hey, we want to shoot with you." <laughs> I fucking love that. No, but I'm serious. <laughs> That's like the I'm, hardest shit. No, I'm serious. Like they I should understand want what you're to saying, shoot ben, with me, but they should. Yeah, of course they will, bro. I'm saying, yeah, they will want to shoot with me once you know I keep putting out the consistent work that True. catches their yeah, eye, yeah, yeah. like whoever their art director is or. Uh, fashion editor yeah is will um you know eventually just read out to me and say hey we want to work with you yeah, yeah now i shouldn't have to be like for that yeah maybe you know uh, everybody's different no i love that, that but i just fun. wanted to be like with that space i want it to be organic yeah no i hear you no mm-hmm. i get it i always think about like the you know how like <clears throat> like how you just talked about <clears throat> excuse me like if you just ping someone you just ping someone like you checking with me and then it puts you on my mind. Mm -hmm. Like I always think about that though. Like I always think that there's a lot of people that might be like, there might be someone obsessed with your shit, Mm -hmm. but when the fucking person at whatever brand is or whatever that high end, whatever they're like in the mix of it, like boss says, I need to shoot fucking produce by next week. And then you start panicking and shit. Mm -hmm. So many people have always gone to like, especially I've learned this with working with EA. It was always like, Oh man, like when the big things come, they're just going to like these go-to teams that they've worked with before. I'm like, how do I get them to remember me? Like I've done all this shit. They should remember me. And so I've always tried to find like all these new tactics. And I feel like there's a lot of people that would benefit from like thinking that way where mm-hmm. sometimes you got to fucking, you know, poke them a little bit and then people start turning heads because Drake probably f- has been fucking with you forever, obviously, mm-hmm. but you just like poked a little bit. And then that fucking shit was like, wow. And then that's like, I think when people hear it, I will understand what you're saying, but at the same time poking the bear, I mean, what would you do? Poke the fucking bear. Poke it? <laughs> yeah, hell yeah. Bro, not everyone. That's the problem. We're so overstimulated mm-hmm. with shit. Like, every day you get on Instagram and someone's hard work that they spent two months working on for TikTok it's just is a quickly, quick fucking yeah. boom and it's done. You know for what I mean? Sure. Yeah, man. Like, bro, I sit on pictures for... I know. Dave does too. Dave oh will sit there God. and be like, oh, I need to tweak uh, this. And I'm like, yo, people just... Do- it, just post it. Yeah, just but done. like, I don't know. There's always that like... Uh, there's always that thing that like it's your art that you 100 percent. It could be 100%. like sound design. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It could be like you always can make something better. Yeah, yeah. Or it could like you know like exactly from like there's so much things that you see every day mm-hmm. that like your mind is just constantly getting bombarded with yeah creative stuff. Right. So, um. I think that that's that becomes overwhelming to it a person. It becomes overwhelming because you're like, I can do this, I can do yeah. this, I can do this. But uh, yeah, I mean, I depends, think both ways but, are sick. But it depends. Like, for example, if it's like a project with TikTok and or a project with X, you know, company. Yeah. I mean, it's on time, out. Yeah. On the day. Right. 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 If it's like something more. Um, you have the luxury of taking your time. If it's something more experimental mm-hmm. uh, and you can experiment, then there's a thousand things you can do. Facts. You know, you can no, print, print print the picture, yeah. scan it. You can, like, there's a whole bunch of, yeah, like, yeah. techniques and I've always just think about, things. like, when, when you think about, uh, uh, when, there's a time where first you're just starving for work. Mm-hmm. And you'll do whatever it takes. And you're going to say, yes, you're going to put yourself in the room. You're going to do all that shit. Then all of a sudden work starts piling up and you're like, oh shit, this is kind of sick. But then you get to this point where it's like, I I wish we would have said, I got to go back to the interview and re-listen to it. But I I wish I would ask you like, where do you see yourselves? What do you think you'll do in the next four years? You know what I mean? For you to have predicted that, Mm -hmm. but what you've pulled off, I don't know if you had a five-year plan back then to see if you're anywhere near it. But like the, the shit you've done has been such a level up where people come to you for the highest quality shit, you know? And then now to take this to the next level, if it is fashion, if it is whatever, like you working on your craft in the meantime, but you working on your craft and like doing that with brands at the same time is going to be the illest shit ever. Cause you use their money to practice. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. But it is like, it's, it's crazy to see progression and to see like, same with you, bro. Like, like you. look at, look at this space. 
I wish like I mean I'm sure you'll show people like this the office that we're in yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's crazy like it's, I'm proud of you you know for for doing what you do no thank you man and like this is like very professional very nice like this is like the elevation that just like how you're saying with me like this is the elevation that I expect from you yeah no you I know? love that I love that yeah man I, I feel like this type of shit right here it's like for creatives watching this that fucking are fans of you me mm -hmm. whatever it may be find this just and they're just looking for inspo and shit like my goal with this set was like i want people to watch this show and be like i want to sit there mm -hmm. you know what i mean someday i want to sit there and mm -hmm. that's how it's always been even when the shit was in the kitchen like i want to sit there like mm -hmm. you know so i think the progression and predicting things is very tough to do but i do feel like uh it's it's fun to learn new tactics and like challenge ourselves to like figure out how to approach shit or how to like how to add a level to you know our path or whatever i don't even know what the fuck i'm talking about I'm just, no yeah i feel that though i think like um you know there's always like kind of what you were saying like in terms of like goals and and like if i had like a five-year goal like you know every year i'll like drop like on December 31st, I'll drop like a page in a notebook and I'll write like goals for the next year. Do you? I, I swear. Yeah. I swear. That's I a have good, it at I mean, my house. Habit. I'll, I'll t literally text you a picture yeah, yeah. of, of uh, one that I did on December 31st, 2021. What was it? Um, it was like a whole bunch of goals. But I, mean, but I hit every single goal. Really? I swear. What was like the one you were the most proud shoot of? Shoot with, you know, I wanted to shoot with Drake. Yeah. Definitely one of the most uh, influential artists. And also I think he is like, he's my favorite artist. Yeah. Him and probably Abel. Right. Um, I wanted to work on some um, commercials. I wanted to shoot some fashion photography. Like um, even if it was just like grabbing a model or something and like going into like a studio, I wanted to um enjoy time mm. with my dog and my girl um and wanted to do an i think it was like album cover or something but Check like those were off. those were all my goals yeah, shoot with able shoot with drake shoot with shoot commercials shoot did you shoot with the weekend yeah recently fire <laughs> so you uh, checked it off within the year that's crazy within a couple of days ago that's fucking crazy yeah, that that's was november fire for people listening to this was we're still in november it's the 14th 2022 <laughs> that's sick uh so i literally like called my friend and i was like yo dude i made these goals and like i hit every single like i was just like i had to like kind of let it out because nobody kind of knew that i had that did that like but like i think the reason i wrote the goals down it wasn't like i'm gonna reach out to drake because he's on my goal list. like yeah. it wasn't like that at, at all it was more so like you know like when you're at the end of a year, like you want to be super optimistic going into like three, two, yeah, one, yeah, happy yeah, new year. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like that feeling of like a reset, a new year, a new day. Uh, you know, what what is like God gonna give you as opportunities for the next year and stuff like that. So like it was just more so like like humble beginnings mm -hmm. and like really like back to day one of writing some goals down no i love that like let me just like get more hungry let yeah. me and like let me get ready for this year and surprisingly like just the other day i hit all the goals and you know yeah it feels good it's cool <laughs> that's kind of so fucking <laughs> yeah, it feels good i do a drink nah, nah, weekend, yeah. fucking do a commercial do all this shit bless as fuck man it's sick mm -hmm. it's 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 uh but I think what's cool is it's inspiring. And also, I think I see you pulling people up like with you and shit, like, which is cool. Uh, uh, Anda, mm -hmm. is that his name? Mm -hmm. Tell me about this dude. Yeah, he's crazy. Is this like, his work is crazy. Is this like someone that you've been collaborating with? Did you like, uh, what's the story behind him? Because I honestly don't know a whole lot. I just was like, yo, mm -hmm. who's this person? I saw you guys did the complex. Was it complex that did the piece on you guys? Mm -hmm. And I was like, who the fuck is this? Mm -hmm. So how, how, how did you guys meet? Uh, so, Anda is um great like one of my best friends yeah um he worked with me uh during the, the puff, like when I worked for puff yeah and kind of on my way out I was like you know trying to get creatives I'm always like getting creatives in like helping out like yeah. when I was there and um 
I had um, reached out to him like, "Yo, your work is sick." He had just started uh, doing like uh, like directing and doing photography. Um, he actually used to work at like Tesla, I think. When you found him, <clears throat> like before, uh, before like that, yeah, yeah, like a yeah. year before that, yeah, like yeah, he hadn't had much. Oh shit, stuff. So he came and worked for Puff for a few months, and just created like a cool bond and he's like one of the most underrated like creatives i think maybe you know maybe not but to me like he's so genius that like i wish people could almost like be in the room with us when we're like talking or just chilling yeah, yeah, yeah. but he's like he's like one of my best friends what do you feel he's great he's like amazing what do you feel that he brings to the table that other people can't produce a vision. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. His vision is crazy. Hands down. Hands down. He's working on a few things and just like always has like insane vision. But I think that's, what's cool about you is that you, you've, you've been willing to pass the torch to other people or give people a shot. Like I know you've brought in a lot of people. I know Andrew Sandler would work with you on stuff and you guys mm -hmm. would be testing out different creatives and giving them access that you have, mm -hmm. which is rare. You know, I, I, mean? I love, I love that. Like yeah. if I have any, like if I have any opportunity to bring somebody in to like work on a project for me or work on a project for somebody, uh, like I'll do that any day. If I like know that they can deliver yeah, and that's this person or this company should work with this person. It's the perfect fit. You're then all I, I'm it. all for it. Yeah. Like I'll put my chest out 1000%. You have to work with this, this creator mm -hmm. because he's going to make your shit look like fucking amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's clutch. That's dope, man. Fuck bro. I know uh, we've already been talking. That's crazy. We've been talking for an hour. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel like, I feel like the come up has been really cool to witness. It's been dope. It's dope to do a part two to hear like all these other things that you've been adding value to. Do you feel like there's something we're missing when we, when we share your story to people that, that we didn't hit that you want to leave people with? Mm. This guy's so goddamn I, and shit. I, I like, you know, just, I'm like everybody else. Just like constantly just like working on my craft. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's all I care about. I don't, really i have nothing more like nothing more to me matters yeah like other than like what like what i'm making like I swear like nothing more like i'm an interesting person and i'm like fun to hang out with and like everybody loves to hang out with me and stuff like that and i love to hang out with everybody whatever, yeah. whatever. but like there's nothing more i think about on a daily mm -hmm. like just like i you know, it's the fine line between like not even being able to like just properly watch TV, right? Because I'm just like thinking of like what I'm gonna do with this picture. Yeah, you're obsessed. Who I'm? Yeah, I'm obsessed. Right. Just solely obsessed with like photography and and just cool stuff. I appreciate you doing this all the time and being down yeah, for black and cream and you know, I mean, you're always down to share shit, and I appreciate mm -hmm. you for that. And I think uh anyone listening needs to pay attention to what you're doing because it's going to get crazier. Um, we did this last time. I don't remember what your hashtag was. You remember I do that shit at the end of the podcast. Maybe I wasn't starting it at that point, but oh I was, yeah. When people comment under yeah, the photos. Yeah, so I tell everyone, if you're not, if you're new to this, mm -hmm. I'm going to tell him to pick Dude, a hashtag. Do you know how many people? The hell of people. Bro, I still get DMs to this day. Like, yo, that episode was crazy. I know. I love that episode. That's what I'm saying. There was a lot of people listening. So, you're going to pick a new hashtag. This is what people are going to go to his Instagram. Whatever your latest photo is, they're going to comment on that shit. Put mm -hmm. this hashtag, tag me at Ben Reverse World. So I know that you, you know, basically the whole idea is that they, now that we, we know, sent you. We know he that you've you. heard the whole thing. You've listened to Ooh, the end. That's the that's, point. That's cool. So that's the point. Some people might say, oh, I listened to this shit. You're yeah. like, oh yeah, what's the hashtag? And they don't know. They're Ooh, fucking lying. That's crazy. I know. So And there was a lot of hashtags. I swear. I know. Still, it's crazy. People probably still hashtag the old episode for hopefully now this will inspire people. No, to check people out part one. literally, like I'll come across a couple hashtags, yeah, like, here and there. Like when I check, what do you want the new one to be? It's gonna be hashtag yo mama. Yo mama. Yeah. All right. I fucking like that. It took us about. I know we took we cut here. It, it took like us forty five minutes. minutes. <laughs> a lie. We had. We were like here brand, for two we had hours. Strategy yeah, we over. actually had to call Anda and all his other people and brainstorm. 
Yo mama. Hashtag your mama. And don't forget to tag me in that shit so we both know. Hashtag your mama, but with love. But with love? Is that all the the whole thing? No, I'm just saying like. Okay, yeah. We say mama, but with love. Got you, got you. So hashtag your mama. At Ben. Real. Verse. World. At Black with No Cream. At Black with No Cream. Tag them all. At Canon. At Canon. USA. Um. All right, bro. Mm-hmm. I appreciate you. Appreciate you. Thank you, you for everything, man. Um, I'm glad that you fuck with Black with No Cream. Yes. Always down to fucking share it. Always down. You're the, you're the go. In support, down to share, always down to inspire. Um, do you want people to, I mean, obviously they'll go follow you on Instagram, but you want to leave them, you want to tell them anything else? Um, you got that camera? You could look at this camera too. Yeah, I would. Tell uh, them something real. I don't know. Just, tell them something real. Look at this one. Look at this one. This one's more like close up and personal. Uh, or that um, I don't know. Just to leave it off on a good note you know if you're out there and you're listening always um just focus on your craft and try not to get overwhelmed with like what i'm doing or what ben's doing or what you know these creators that are out there are doing because um you know it's just gonna eat you alive and like really not make you as fulfilled as when you focus on your own craft and know that there's like years you know if you're 50 or if you're if you're 50 on the bright side i mean you got 40 more years to keep making content or you only give them till 90 why not (laughs) no i know i I get you you know but if you're you know young 18 there's a lot of like 18 year olds that probably follow us and oh yeah and i would say you know, whatever age, just like focus on your craft. Um, always like just like YouTube information. Um, pace yourself with you and not other people. Pace with yourself. Know that it's a long game. Know that, um, you know, if you can't figure it out today, you're going to figure it out tomorrow. But really push for your goals. Push for what you want. Believe in yourself. Ask people for information. Listen. Um, Always just seek information. That's it. And just go crazy. Thank you, dog. Yeah. Appreciate you, bro. Thank you, bro. <laughs> Boom, that's a wrap. Hell yeah. Yo, it's Ben. I just wanted to say thank you for listening to today's episode. We have plenty of episodes that have come out in the past, and we're dropping new ones every single Sunday for season two. So make sure to subscribe on whatever podcast platform you're listening to or watching on. And if you haven't joined Black Window Cream community, what you doing? It's the best community for creators on the planet Earth. Go to bwnc.com slash join. We would love to see you in there. Please join. All right, see you next week.